Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com. Today we're going to talk about the three kinds of A-B testing metrics that you need to be successful. If you don't have any of these metrics or any of these types of metrics, you will fail in your testing efforts. I'll also walk you through an example of what that looks like in a real life client that I work with and how those metrics might apply for them and also how they can apply to you and your, your businesses. Not too long ago, I was working with a client who historically had had a hard time sticking to the metrics that we decided for success. It seemed like this client was always changing the metrics that mattered, the metrics that we were using to measure the success of our tests. So one time, before I presented the test results, I knew what the results were going to be, and I pinned him down on it before the, uh, I showed him any data. I said, look, these are the variations we tested, and I want to know before I show you any data and results, what you think the primary metric is. Here are the options. And we talked about it, and we talked about the values of each metric, and after we were done, we agreed on a metric. And then I showed him the results. And when he saw that the results weren't in line with the metric he thought was most important, he decided he thought the other metrics looked better. This kind of wishy-washy switching of metrics, switching how you interpret tests, is devastating to a testing program. The things I'm gonna to talk to you about today are the three types of metrics you have to have but more importantly than knowing the three types of metrics you have to have, you have to make sure you stick to them. You can't be changing these metrics. The first metric we're going to cover is called the business metric. The second metric is the test specific metric. And the third metric is our analytics metrics. The business metric is the first metric and it's the most important metric. The business metric is what helps map to the outcome that you want for your business. So let's use a simple example from one of my clients. One of the clients I work with is called justserve.org and they help people get out and serve. Their primary business metric is to get people to volunteer to actually go and serve. The business metric is important because it should be the same for every test. No matter what you're testing, if your website doesn't change or your business model doesn't change, your business metric shouldn't change either. This business metric is established by understanding what the business is meant to accomplish, how the business makes money, and that metric should be tied to how that business makes money. Now, in the case of Just Serve, they're not trying to make money, but their goal is to get people serving and so for them, the business metric of getting people to volunteer to serve is their primary goal, their primary metric, and why, that's why it's called their business metric. Again, I want to emphasize that the business metric is almost always the primary metric. It's the first thing you look at when you interpret results. It's the metric that matters most. And any other metric that, even if it does really well, doesn't matter as much as the business metric. The second metric that every split tester or A-B tester out there needs to know is the test-specific metric. This metric is something you use that's specific to each test, which means it can be different per test. Every time you add a new element and you want to track clicks on that element, that element needs a test-specific metric. When you change the page and you want to understand the impact of that change, you're likely implementing metrics to understand and monitor and measure the value of that change. And those test-specific metrics are unique to each test that you run. The unique thing about your test-specific metrics is they can be primary or secondary metrics. They can be primary metrics because the outcome of the test may be dependent on those metrics. They can also be secondary metrics. You may want to understand the value of the things that you've added, but they're not as important as your, your other primary metrics or your business metrics. And so sometimes you want to track your test specific metrics as secondary metrics, knowing that you won't base a decision on that, but it could lead to new insights, new information, new ideas, and, and help you brainstorm things that you could do. Your test specific metrics are the most challenging to implement because they're different with every test. And this is where a lot of QA comes in when you're implementing these metrics, you need to check them multiple times. I can't tell you how many times I've unfortunately launched the test and I thought my test specific metrics were good only to find out later, you know, weeks into the test or days into the test that I had messed up somewhere and the test specific metrics were implemented well. So that's the second type of metric that every tester needs to know. The test specific metrics, they can be primary or secondary metrics, but they need to be on there for most tests. The third type of metric that I want to talk about today is what I call the analytics metrics. Now I realize that analytics metrics is very broad because most metrics are analytics metrics, but the reason I bucket these into a separate category is because analytics is something that you can dive into indefinitely. There's so many ways you can slice and dice your data, so many data points you can look at, so many different metrics you can look at. It's most important to understand that almost all of these metrics in your analytics tools are secondary metrics. Very seldom well, you have an out-of-the-box metrics or a metric that you're tracking with your analytics tool that becomes your primary metric randomly for one test. If you're looking at your testing data and you have a metric that you've never used as your primary metric, that metric most likely should not be used for your primary metric for any test. 
Again, your primary metrics should be your business metrics, your test specific metrics, but almost never should it be your analytics metrics. This is a huge problem we see with organizations where their testing team evolves from the analytics team. Analytics teams love lots of metrics and they want to use as many metrics as they can to tell the full story of what's happening in the data. The challenge with that is when you have too many metrics, it's like, well, this metric went up and that metric went down and this was this and that's that. It's too confusing, it's too much, and it should drive insights when you look at those, those different data points, but they should never be your primary metrics. One of the main ways that your analytics metrics can be useful is when your primary metrics don't have a change in behavior. So if you launch a test and there's no change with your primary metrics, they kind of flatline or they're exactly the same, you can then turn to your secondary metrics to see if there's any other data point that does matter in the context of that test. In general though, all your analytics data and all your analytics metrics should be your secondary metrics. They don't matter to the test and they're primarily used to generate ideas for follow-up tests, follow-up segmentation opportunities. I wanna go back to justserve.org. They have several analytics metrics. They're secondary metrics that are important to their business, but again, they are secondary metrics. Meaning, the test results are not interpreted by that metric first. We look at the other metrics first, the business metrics and the test specific metrics. For Just Serve, they have to get people registering in order to sign up to volunteer to do service. So that registration is a key metric, but it's secondary to the end business metric of getting people to, to actually volunteer. Another analytics metric for JustServe.org, which is secondary, is that click to learn more about a project. Every project has information about, at a summary level, about the project itself. And to learn more about the project, you have to click the learn more button to get all the details, all the times, all the locations. That click to learn more is an important analytics metric, but again, it is secondary to the end outcome of the business impact of people volunteering to actually serve. Okay, now that you know the three metrics you need to be using and the three different types and how they apply, I have to give one massive caution before we end this video. In the industry, sometimes we call ourselves conversion rate optimizers because we have a metric and we're optimizing to that metric to increase the conversion rate of that metric. The problem with this is when you optimize to a metric, you're failing to look at the entire visitor experience. Yes, you should optimize to your primary metric and I hope that's a business metric. The challenge is if that's all you optimize to, if you neglect the visitor experience and say, I will do anything I need to to increase my conversion rate of my business metric, you potentially lose the opportunity to have a better, stronger business in the long run. Things like lifetime value of the customer. If you neglect the lifetime value of a customer and you only look at that, that finite conversion, you potentially hurt your business. Good testing is about experience optimization. It's not about optimizing to a single metric or improving conversion rates. It's about improving the visitor experience and hopefully that improvement in visitor experience maps directly to your outcome that influences your business success. I'll have another video on this to go into more detail, but I feel like everyone in this industry should be called experience optimizers, not conversion rate optimizers, not A-B testers, not split testers, not landing page optimizers. We're optimizing experiences for visitors. And when we do that right, we increase the business value and the business outcome for the visitors and the business themselves. Also, if you'd be interested in getting some free consulting, put that in the comments below and say free consulting so that I know that there's interest. If there is interest, potentially what I'll do is I'll put that on my website and we'll have some free consulting sessions. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I hope this helps you get better testing and more conversions with your testing.